My name is Shell. I am a sailor, a storyteller, and a dreamer. Mostly though, I'm just a regular gal learning as I go. And these, these are my stories. Ahoy friends, a lot has happened since I was last in touch with you. The July 4th holiday weekend came and went. We got the furling head sail installed aboard Charm. I assessed the electrical system aboard Charisma. We also went to one of my most favorite places on earth, the Apostle Islands up in Lake Superior. And we finally got the first sail of the season aboard Charm. It is 4th of July holiday weekend and we're here to get the head sail put on. I don't know why, but for some reason this roller furler always seems to get the best of me. I had a difficult time remembering how I had attached the tack of the sail onto the furling drum. And what I ended up doing is finding an old picture from last season of what I had done. And in that photo, I had used just some thin line to actually attach the tack to a protrusion that's on the furler that has a small hole that the line fit through. This season, I decided to use this green parachute cord that you see because I couldn't reuse the line from last year due to its ends having frayed. It was a little bit of a pain, but I was able to finally get it all together and cross that job off the to-do list. After being away for a little while, the last week and a half or so, I was a little worried to see what things would look like on board. And it turns out uh, everything's A-OK -okay with the bilge which typically we do have a dry bilge anyway so i i'm not always super worried about it but it's a boat so you always want to make sure that's kind of in the forefront of your mind regardless of whether your boat typically is dry or not dry as part of the battery conversion project aboard charm we scoped out the compartment that holds the battery plus the case and we also were able to determine that the battery we will be ordering is going to fit a-ok -okay. the other thing i need to check is the uh is to check the forward hatch to see how much we have with any water leaking. So I have this piece of plastic from our shrink wrap setup. Uh, there is a little bit of staining here, but it's just a very minuscule amount. To help with solving the problem of the leaking forward hatch, I had reached out to my mentor, Keith Scott of the sailboat company some time ago, and he had sent me a list of instructions to try to diagnose the problem. The first thing he said to do was to remove the inner frame from the hatch with unscrewing all the screws, which is what you see me doing here. From there, he said what we could do is the bucket test. And then once we were able to see where the water was coming in from, we would know what steps to take from that point forward. So we removed the frame and now we're going to do the water test to see exactly where the water is coming in. Okay. All right, well, now we know. It's leaking from the aft corner on the starboard side. I don't see any other water intrusion with the bucket test. Once we had that diagnosis, we were then able to actually implement the repair. And what we used was some Starbright silicone that is a clear in color. And we filled in the little screw hole where the water intrusion was coming from. And then from there, we also opted to do a bead around the perimeter of the forward hatch just to be double safe. And from there, it was just waiting for the silicone to cure. I also wanted to talk to you all about some comments that I've gotten on my channel. There's been a few people who have wondered why I'm putting out videos that I'm putting out. In other words, why, what's the reason for putting this video out? And this is just me telling my story about my journey back to sailing after having been away from sailing for a few decades, uh, or at least a couple. And I'm just doing this as a way to document for myself personally, um, to look back on and reflect as well as to re revisit lessons learned. And also I, I do this because I'm really hoping to connect with all of you out there, uh, people who are like me doing the same thing, uh, you know, getting a boat, learning these new things and sharing experiences. And so I hope that you will find something useful at some point, or if it's not useful, it's all right to move along to the next channel and it's not gonna hurt my feelings. 
But for those of you who do enjoy connecting, sharing experiences and sharing stories and learning together, hey, I'm totally stoked to connect, to help each other along as we learn about all things sailing. I think there comes a time when all of us sailors can most likely agree that at some point it's time to set aside the project or to-do list and just go sailing. We had gusts on the lake up to 18 knots, and I took it as an opportunity to learn how to reef the mainsail for the first time. I'm not sure that I did everything according to textbook, but it seemed to serve our purposes, and I ended up being pleased with the result of my efforts. I also learned that I have some equipment on board charm that I should have used last season. I actually have two stand-up swivel blocks, a deck organizer, and two mini jammers on top of the port side coach roof that I used this time around to raise the mainsail from the cockpit. I came across a fellow compact owner's video and saw that is how his boat was rigged, and I thought, what am I waiting for? I need to use this equipment. I'm so glad that I made the effort to do so. Sitting here at the Bayfield Marina City Dock, we're getting ready to take a cruise on a Catalina 36. I think it's um, through all hand sailing and we'll be going for a two and a half hour sunset cruise. It actually turned out that we went aboard a Beneteau First 375 for our sunset sail. Our captain, Captain Bronte, was absolutely amazing. It was a fabulous experience, and I highly recommend stopping by All Hands Sailing to take a sail if you're ever in that area. 